Schmidt's Law. If a material is subjected to tensile stress, it will eventually deform if the tensile forces are too great. As already explained in detail in the linked video on deformation, this requires lattice planes to slip. For this purpose, forces must act in a suitable manner in a slip plane so that it can be sheared. However, a force in the slip plane alone is not sufficient. Within the slip plane, the force must also be directed in slip direction. If, for example, a shear force acts in a slip plane but is directed perpendicular to the slip direction, this slip plane will not be sheared off. Only forces in the slip direction, which means in a slip system, are therefore relevant for a sliding of the atomic planes. Therefore, the first question is how the force in a slip system can be determined from the external force F0, depending on the spatial orientation of the slip system. Relevant for this is on the one hand the spatial orientation of the slip plane and on the other hand the orientation of the slip direction. Both are defined by an angle. The angle alpha describes the angle between the external tensile force F0 and the surface normal of the slip plane. The orientation of the slip direction is defined analogously as the angle beta between the tensile axis and the slip direction. Both angles are independent of each other only within certain limits. First, the external force F0 is decomposed into a component in slip direction. This is done by the cosine of the angle beta. Obviously, the greatest force in slip direction occurs when it is oriented at a small angle beta to the tensile axis. The slip plane is then inevitably very steeply inclined. This in turn means a large angle alpha. However, with such a steep orientation of the slip plane, its area also increases. As a result, significantly more atomic bonds between the lattice planes now have to be sheared off. In this case, even the larger shear force is not sufficient to shear off the plane due to the disproportionately increased area of the slip plane. The decisive factor for sliding is therefore not the force alone, but the force per unit area, which means the shear stress. The quotient of the shear force acting in slip direction and the area of the slip plane gives the relevant shear stress tau for slipping. Therefore, in addition to the dependence of the shear force on the angle beta, the dependence of the slip plane area on the angle alpha must also be known. If the cross-sectional area of the specimen is denoted by a zero, the area of the slip plane results from the cosine of the angle alpha as indicated. If we use the formula for the shear force and the slip plane area in the definition of the shear stress, we obtain the given relationship. In this equation, the quotient of the force F0 and the cross-sectional area A0 corresponds to the external normal stress sigma 0. The shear stress acting in the slip system can therefore be determined using the angles alpha and beta, as shown. This equation is also called Schmidt's law. In this context, the geometry factor marked in red is often referred to as Schmidt factor M. If a certain critical resolved shear stress is exceeded in a slip system, namely in the slip system with the largest Schmidt factor, the planes begin to slip or the dislocations begin to migrate through the crystal. The deformation process begins. It should be noted that the critical shear stresses do not just refer to any shear stress in a slip plane, but to the component that is actually directed in slip direction. For this reason, these critical shear stresses are also referred to as critical resolved shear stresses. Thus, the term resolved ultimately refers to the shear stress decomposed in slip direction. The difference between the shear stress in a slip plane and the resolved shear stress in slip direction is to be explained with a numerical example. For this purpose, a slip plane is considered which is inclined by the angle alpha equal to 15 degrees. If a normal stress of 400 newtons per square millimeter is applied, a shear stress of 100 newtons per square millimeter acts in the slip plane. If in this case the slip direction were oriented at an angle beta equal to 75 degrees to the tensile axis, the 100 newtons per square millimeter would actually also correspond to the shear stress in slip direction. However, if the slip direction in the slip plane is oriented at an angle beta equal to 80 degrees to the tensile axis, only a shear stress of 67 newtons per square millimeter acts in the slip direction. It is this shear stress resolved in slip direction that is relevant for slipping and not the stress of 100 newtons per square millimeter acting in the slip plane. 
The question now arises as to how a slip system must be spatially oriented in order to obtain the greatest possible shear stress there, which means a maximum Schmid factor. For this purpose, we need to look at Schmid's law in more detail. First, although the cosine alpha reaches its maximum value of 1 for an angle of 0 degrees, the angle beta is necessarily 90 degrees in this case. Therefore, the cosine beta is 0 and so is the Schmidt factor. Thus, no shear stresses occur in slip planes perpendicular to the tensile axis. Even in the other extreme case, when the slip planes are aligned parallel to the tensile axis and the angle alpha is 90 degrees, no shear stresses occur because the cosine of 90 degrees is then zero. In fact, the largest shear stresses in a slip plane will occur at an angle of alpha equal to 45 degrees. The maximum resolved shear stress results when the slip direction in this plane is directed upwards. The angle beta is then also 45 degrees. In this ideal case, the Schmidt factor reaches the maximum value of 0.5. In principle, it should be noted that the two angles cannot be chosen completely independently of each other. The maximum resolved shear stresses are therefore half as large as the external normal stresses. This is the reason why specially oriented single crystals show slip steps at an angle of 45 degrees to the tensile axis in the tensile test. More information on this can be found in the linked video. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.